what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here this will be a spoiler review for a quiet place day one the third entry in the ongoing the quiet place franchise because we actually already know we have a fourth film coming in chronological order this is the first entry that you should be watching if you ever want to sit down and watch this franchise for anyone who has never watched any of the a quiet place films this is being directed by michael sarnowski john krasinski of course stepped down passed the baton to him it's also written by sarnowski it is starring lupita nyango joseph quinn alex wolf and digimon hansu and a few others now this story of course is revolving around lupita's character named samira following her character a woman named sam during the early stages of an invasion in new york city by alien creatures with ultrasonic hearing so a quiet place day one is one of the strongest prequels i've ever seen not only that but perhaps the most beautiful horror film i have seen all year i i would say that out of the three so far this is my favorite one it delivers familiar scares, tension, and despite its grim nature, has a far more touching and heartfelt story compared to the last two films with our Abbott family, which I still love. I had spent a few videos hyping this project up and it was everything I hoped it would be and then some. A Quiet Place Day 1 is at this point, like I stated, not only my favorite film of the trilogy that we have now, but it's also my favorite movie of this year. Not the best, because that still goes to Dune 2, but it's my personal favorite that I look forward to revisiting this weekend with a larger audience. Sarnowski's screenplay is drenched in a lot of emotionally engaging character work, which makes the more terrifying instances effective at every turn, especially this flooded subway sequence that happens later on. Our main protagonist, Sammy. Yes, I know her name is Samira, but I'm calling her Sammy for short. She's a poet on her last leg. What that means will make sense once you see the film. She's a bit snarky, lacks hope, doesn't appreciate life at the moment, and despite this alien invasion, is determined to get one last slice of pizza from this place called Patsy's, I believe. An old shop her father, who was a real good pianist, I think she stated during the film, used to take her to when she was a little girl. She also owns this cap named Frodo, who is pretty much an effective tension device for most of the story. As mentioned, most of this unfolds with her unique set of circumstances carrying us throughout it all. Sammy is a well-rounded character that I couldn't help but feel attached to from the get-go. Her personality is enticing, and we learn enough about her to get us invested in her journey and the gradual appreciation for life that she earns over time. Of course, Sammy isn't alone. As you see in the trailers and all the TV spots, we then have Eric, this young man from Kent, England, who it's implied that he seems to be a bit of a screw up in life or he just doesn't have the greatest existence at the moment. He's in New York for law school and instead he got this unexpected alien invasion. Sarnowski puts together these two broken souls who not only try to survive like the Abbots did in our main story, but learn to appreciate life from each other or just have a more positive outlook as the film is progressing. Day One story is poignant in several regards due to this brilliant touch to its narrative. An alien invasion is ob obviously an extreme hyperbole for the point, but the message about living life to the fullest, even when times get rough, shine through. I commend Sarnowski for keeping these creatures or Sarnowski, I should say, for keeping these creatures mysterious and intimidating. His screenplay explores more of their functions, but not in a way that removes the terror that they cause. There's a lot of subtlety when it comes to Eric's backstory as well, but it's clear to me that he has anxiety problems and seems to have no motivation in life at the moment. I just appreciate the film not exposition, dumping everything and favoring more of a show, not tell approach and leaving things up to my own interpretation based off of these brief bits of dialogue he delivers the moment he is introduced. What I prefer here versus the Abbots is that we're witnessing two people decide to work together versus the Abbots who are already a family, so of course they work together. The bond between Samira and Eric is more engaging since we are seeing a relationship blossom between these two complete strangers. When it comes to the scares, day one does lean on a jump scare or two, but, but outside of that, it's dependent on how little we know about the creature still, our desire to see Eric and Sammy live, stellar sound design, a couple of gnarly chase sequences, and the presence of noises at the worst possible times. All the exchanges between Sammy and Eric are touching thanks to the dialogue that makes every conversation feel natural and realistic. Having watched the movie, I'd also like to commend the major bits of foreshadowing that are present in this story. Two in particular, looking back on it, was definitely Sarnowski communicating who would live and who would die. A screenplay this strong is only made better when you select two of the most talented performers working today to bring it to life. Joseph 
and Lupita are simply phenomenal as this duo of broken souls trying to navigate this new world. Their facial expressions say so much at all times and it's a necessary talent for this story since they don't get to talk consistently. Lupita is the standout. She devours this role completely. I can feel her hopeless nature, the the frustration that Sammy feels, the nostalgia and longing for pizza, and every other aspect about Samira. Both of them just had amazing chemistry that shined throughout. Sarnowski directed this film masterfully. There's no other way to put it. The camera work in the film is tremendous. A lot of dynamic shots in the cinematography, which heighten the tension, especially the aerial shots of the creatures scaling the buildings and his edge of your seat chase sequence Eric has during the third act. Sarnowski delivers thrills when needed, but finds time for these soft moments that feel more rewarding because of the character work between Sammy and Eric. Definitely had a claustrophobic feeling to it as well. Made you feel isolated. It's just all the story is mostly just dreadful. It's just dripping in dread, dripping in no hope. But then he finds these pockets of time to make you feel sad. There were times where I literally had tears swelling up in my eyes. You'll understand it when you see the film. Like, well, if you have a heart, I guess you will. The pacing is more than suitable, I would say. None of the creatures stalking human moments go on for too long. They exist long enough to elicit a sweaty palm or two, and they were on to the next scene. Every moment had time to breathe and serve its purpose. The score... I don't think this was Marco Beltrami doing the score, but the score was another added layer that definitely enhanced the overall experience. It chimes in at all the right moments, makes you cr not cry. Uh, I, <laughs> like I said before, I, I was teary eyed for a few bits during this uh, film and the, the score definitely helped at times. It chimed in at all the right moments to make you feel sympathetic towards these two, feel scared, just really hit you in the gut with emotions overall. The score was tremendous. I don't think it was Marco Beltrami. It didn't sound like him, but the replacement, whoever it was, you did a phenomenal job. All in all, I would give A Quiet Place Day 1 a solid 8 out of 10. I would also argue that the visual effects when it comes to these creatures and the way they look, very, still very convincing, believable, intimidating presence. Uh, I like the way Sarnowski at times was keeping them shrouded in a lot of the smoke, sh smoke that was present in some of the shots when they first crash land and there's debris smoke all in the air and we're seeing silhouettes come out of the come out of it to obviously build tension and get you on the edge very well done well crafted movie i loved it eight out of ten let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't recorded make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications you're in this video in the description i have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews i'm going to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video